Did you know a recent national survey tells us that only 35% of Americans have a will and 18% have a trust? Survey participants were asked why they did not have any estate planning documents. Following are some of their responses. Uh, some believe the uh, spouse and children will automatically get the assets. Some feel they don't have enough of assets to consider doing an estate planning. Uh, some don't want to think about dying. Uh, some think the documents are too expensive, uh, that is estate planning documents. And finally, some just don't understand how it works. If we look at these responses, we see that four out of five or 80% of these are based on misunderstanding or lack of knowledge. In this session, we're going to focus on several basic estate planning concepts so you can better understand how this process works. Let's begin with you or the both of you if you are married. All of us have an estate plan because many of us own real property like your home or your other real estate. Um, we all have personal property like automobiles, clothes, furniture, jewelry, TVs, computers, etc. And we also have title property like bank and brokerage accounts, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, life insurance, retirement plans, and other financial instruments. All of these make up your assets. So we will call this the A component. We also have heirs or beneficiaries. Typically, these are your children, those who you want to receive your assets after you pass. This could also be a charity like your church. So we will call this component the B component. The objective of an estate plan after our passing is to make sure A gets to B. Pretty simple. However, there are sometimes conditions a condition can be a future uncertain event, and if the event happens, something needs to be done. As an example, if one of these beneficiaries were only 12 years old, he would be unable to receive your assets until he reached a certain age, usually 18 or above. Therefore, a provision would need to be made to allow for this. So, we'll call this the C component. Okay. Now we can see that the objective of an estate plan is to get A to B regardless of or taking into consideration C. Now let's look at the A component and see the various ways assets can be transferred. One way is joint tenancy with right of survivorship. Some attorneys estimate Married couples have as much as 90% of their assets structured in this form of ownership, as your house can be titled this way, as well as your car and your bank account. For purposes of this explanation, we are just going to focus on your house. So, when one person dies, the title or ownership of the house automatically tra transfers to the survivor. Now the house is owned as sole ownership. Another form of ownership is sole ownership. In this case, we're going to talk about the car. The car is owned by the husband. One day while going to the store, the husband has an accident and dies. Unfortunately, the wife is with him and she also dies. Now what happens? Well, the car is transferred by probate and um, this is actually done through your will via the probate process. If you don't have a will, the state has one that provides a distribution formula. That is, who will get what. A couple of other points. Typically, the cost of probate is 1 to 8% of the value of the asset being probated. This could be several hundred dollars. Additionally, it usually takes several months to complete the probate process before the final transfer of the asset. Another way an asset can transfer 
is by beneficiary selection. Uh, we are going to consider the life insurance policy that the husband has. When the husband died in the accident, uh, the wife was the beneficiary of the insurance. However, she died too. The contingent or backup beneficiaries are the children. So the life insurance proceeds go directly to them. Here we learn that a beneficiary selection can have a backup. The assets go directly to the beneficiary, no probate. It would really be efficient if we could have all assets go to a beneficiary. Actually, we can. The next way that an asset can be transferred is by using a revocable living trust. For most people, this is usually the best way to have assets transferred to a beneficiary. Let's see how the trust works and why this is such a great transfer vehicle. When you create a trust, you become the grantor. This means that you set up the trust and you can say how your assets transfer, when they transfer, and who gets your assets. Next, you are the trustee. This means that you hold title to the assets that are in your trust. This is why you transfer all your assets into your trust, your real property, your personal property, and your title property. Additionally, you are the beneficiary. This simply means you continue to use and enjoy all your assets. Finally, you select a successor trustee. This is one who will implement your instructions if you become incapacitated or when you die. Normally, adult children are chosen for this position. Just a couple of other comments. One, when you create a trust, you keep absolute control of all your assets. Two, the trust becomes a holding place for all your assets. Therefore, three, all your assets will transfer to the beneficiary you pick and will usually not have to go through the probate process. Finally, having a successor trustee will offset the potential condition that you might become incapacitated as the successor trustee will manage all your trust asset, assets for your benefit. When one of you dies, typically there is nothing that needs to be done. When the surviving spouse dies, the successor trustee takes over and follows the trust instructions to distribute the assets to the beneficiaries. However, if there is a condition, such as the beneficiaries are still minors, the trustees will hold the assets in a holding trust and pay out income from the trust and principal for certain uh, such things as an example for a college education. This is how a trust can handle a future condition that would apply to a beneficiary. Uh, let's look at some other conditions uh, that could apply to you and what documents are usually used. Uh, first of all is distribution issues. Uh, we've already seen that the revocable living trust has the capacity to handle multiple conditions that might arise in the distribution process. Next would be incapacitation. Um, the durable powers of attorney are designed to select a person to act on your behalf to make decisions if you become incapacitated. There are two durable powers of attorney. One is designed to select a person to make financial decisions if you cannot, and the other allows a person to make medical decisions if you are incapacitated. Uh, if you go into a comatose state, a living will with advanced directions, uh, directives uh, can be used to state your wishes about being kept on life support systems. And finally, if you forget to transfer an asset into your trust, um, there is the last will. Sometimes this is called the pour over will. This will direct any asset that you may individually own at the time you die to go to your trust. This allows for all your assets to be distributed to your beneficiaries the way you want. Assets that flow from the will to your trust may be subject to probate. This is why it's very important 
to transfer all your assets to your trust. We're almost done. Let's take a look at what you should look for when setting up your estate plan. Actually, an appropriate term would be your estate plan portfolio. Here is why. Your plan will include a revocable living trust. We have seen that this is an excellent vehicle to make sure that your assets go to who you want, when you want, and how you want. It will include durable powers of attorney. This will allow you to select someone to act on your behalf to make financial decisions and medical decisions if you cannot. It will include a living will with directives. This allows you to state your choice about the continuation of life support systems. And it will include a last will, allowing you to make sure that all your assets will flow through your trust. It also includes a certificate of trust. This is a five page summary of your trust that you can give to, as an example, your bank to prove that you have a trust so they will change the title of your bank account to your trust. Schedules, ledgers, and deeds. These are forms to list who and how your assets are owned and that they, those assets that are placed in your trust. Transmittal letters. These are forms that allow you to change the title or beneficiary designation of your assets. Portfolio summary. This is a description of the different sections of your estate plan portfolio. Trustee memorandum. This is a set of instructions that lets your trustee know what to do at different stages of trust administration. And finally, administrative documents. These are a number of documents to make future changes and forms to carry out future trust administrative issues. As you can see, all these components make for a very complete estate plan package. What's next? Well, contact the person who sent you here. They can help you gather data to begin your own personal estate plan. They can give you a price quote and they can help you complete this process. Thank you.